praise the Lord. All your Bibles with me to Galatians chapter 4, beginning with the fourth verse. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, let us pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given to us. Lord, let it, Lord, just continue to minister. Continue to receive our praise and our worship. Continue to uh, and help us to have a heart of, of, of humility and, and, and gratitude, Father God, for all that you have done. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I, as I read the scripture, I, I, I began to think about the fact that it says in the fullness of time. <laughs> Begin to think about the fact that uh, uh, it seemed like everything was the wrong time. Have, did you, have you ever had a, a, a feeling that hey, this is just the wrong time, I'm in the wrong place, I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing, you know? Uh, and and that, that's what it seems like when you, when you begin to study the, uh, the story of Christ's birth. And, in the beginning of, of, of Jesus going to, to Bethlehem, you begin to think, wow, could anything be more messed up? You know, and, and, and so I begin to list the things that, that were wrong with, uh, uh, with this, uh, this story. Uh, it says, our scripture verse says, in the fullness of time. And yet, uh, it was the wrong time for, uh, for a man. Uh, all the people in, in Israel were, were really servants of, uh, of Caesar Augustus. They, uh, I, I don't know what it was. Caesar wanted to, uh, wanted to fight another war, and so he decided he would collect taxes. And, but uh, uh, this was not a good time for people in Israel for, for Jesus to come. I mean, you would have thought that the, uh, there, there would uh, be an opportunity for them to be free, and then when Jesus come, they would be free to worship him. It was just a bad time, if you please. Uh, Caesar wanted money, and we're not sure why he wanted money, but uh, it says that uh, he decreed that all the world should be taxed. And so, and so uh, the people of Israel, uh, because of their, uh, their uh, heritage, because of, of, of where they were born, they were, they were to go to the place of their uh, of their founding fathers. In other words, if you were if you were of the tribe of Judah, you would go to Judah, uh, to the Judah area of Judah. If you were the tribe of Benjamin, you go to that area. If you were the tribe of uh, Issachar, you go to that one, and so forth and so forth. And uh, and so they had to go because there was the record of who they were. Uh, it's kind of like having a passport. You know, you have to go where you. Uh, when you're registering, you have to go back to where your passport says you're from to, to get registered. Well, that's the same way with with, uh, uh, with this time in Israel. And uh, so we see that it was the wrong time for the, the people of Israel to to uh, to go be uh, to go be taxed. It was the wrong time financially. I don't know whether I don't know whether you. I don't know what, when you pay taxes or how often you pay taxes, but I, I'm here to tell you that tax time is not a fun time. Um, my my wife's birthday is April the 15th, and uh, uh, that is tax day in America. And and so uh, usually her father and I myself are very busy adding up how many taxes we have to pay, and so sometimes. Hopefully not me, but sometimes her father would forget that it was my wife's birthday because 
it was tax time. Uh, uh, tax time is not good because you, you don't have all the extra money. You're trying to get money together to pay taxes. And, and then come on top of that, you have your wife's birthday. And April 12th is our anniversary. And, and so you're, uh, there's not a lot of money left on tax day. If you know what I mean. And tax time is not a good time. It's the wrong time financially. Don't you just love paying taxes? Don't you look forward to that time? Oh, goody, I get to pay taxes today. You know, I don't think so. It was the wrong time to be in Nazareth for Mary and Joseph. Think about it for a minute. What are they doing in Nazareth anyway? And then for them to have to go back to Bethlehem to pay taxes. And then for them to have to go back, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's over 70 miles or 100, over 100 kilometers from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And if you, if, you, if you don't go through Samaria, and most of the Jews did not go through Samaria, it was even further for them. They had to go around, and so you could add maybe 50, 60 more kilometers to, to your trip just because you wanted to avoid going through Samaria. It was, uh, it was a, a bad time. It was a bad time, wrong time for them because they were in Nazareth. In Micah chapter 5 and verse 2 it says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are little among the thousands of you to get out of you should come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. His going forth are from old and from everlasting. Uh, so one of the one of the bad things about coming from Nazareth is that uh, the closer you are, the easier it is for you to get to Bethlehem. And so the, the quicker you get to Bethlehem, the quicker you get these best rooms in the hotel, right? Or the motel, whatever whatever you want to call it, the inn. And, uh, but it was the wrong time for Mary and Joseph because they were in Nazareth. It was the wrong time of the year. Now we, uh, in America, celebrate uh, Christmas on uh, December 25th. And uh, in Russia, they celebrate January the 7th. And uh, uh, it doesn't make a difference which, which, which day you celebrate. It's cold, it's wintry, it's not a good time for travel. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate all of you being here today because in America many of the churches are closed today because they've had a little bit of snow. In fact, in Texas, if they get more than more than a centimeter of snow, they close they close everything down. You know, uh, and so I think we've had more than that here, and so you're here, and we appreciate that. But uh, still, winter is not a, a good time. It's the wrong time of the year. Um, someone said, well, how do you know it was on the 25th? I don't, okay? But I, I have this personal uh, thought that uh, God was able to set what time of the year uh, his son was born, amen? In fact, uh, I, I, I read Haggai, Haggai chapter 2, and it says, Consider now, uh, from this day forward, the, the 24th day of the ninth month. From the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn? Or as yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yet yielded fruit. But from this day, I will bless you. And, and because it says the, the, from the 24th, that we, we, we think of Jesus being born at midnight of the 24th. But, and from that day, we're, we're, we're to be blessed. And so, and so from that, uh, I extrapolate in my own theological thinking that Jesus Christ was born uh, on, the, uh, on the 24th, the midnight of the 24th, and, and therefore we celebrate His birth on the 25th. Because from that day, from the day Jesus Christ was born, we are blessed. Amen? Amen. From the day God said, I will send my Son and, and, and bless the world. And so... Uh, uh, even though it was winter time, the wrong time of the year, it probably was the day when Jesus Christ was born. It was the wrong time for Joseph, definitely. Now, most builders and 
carpenters work during the summertime. I don't know whether you are a builder or a carpenter, but uh, there's not much work available in the wintertime. And, and uh, so for you to have to go in the wintertime and for you to have to pay taxes in the wintertime is it, not a really good thing, especially if you're a carpenter. And, and even, even if Joseph uh, was working steadily, the, the fact of the matter is, if you're not working, you don't get paid. And here Joseph is leaving his carpenter shop and, and going the, the 100 or the 160 kilometers to, to, to Bethlehem. And, and this whole time, he's not being paid. Instead, he's shelling out money for, for food and for, for other necessities that they might have along the way. It's the wrong time for Joseph. It's the wrong time for Mary. Really the wrong time for Mary. I mean, think about it. If you're nine months pregnant, uh, you don't feel very good. You don't feel good sitting down. You don't feel good standing up. You don't feel good laying down. And, and you definitely don't feel good riding on a donkey 160 <laughs> kilometers to, to a, a place that is not home. I mean, it's one thing to say we're going home, but another thing to say, what? We're taking a trip? You know, uh, I, there are women here that will tell you that at nine months, it, it, there, there's nothing that makes you feel real good physically, at least. Okay, you may enjoy worshiping the Lord, you may really enjoy giving glory to God, but but trust me, uh, 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 men, if you're around a woman who is nine months pregnant, be nice. <laughs> Can you imagine, pregnant? You're very packing for a trip. Uh, I, to, to this day, I don't understand why she didn't take baby clothes, but maybe the, the, she was hoping they could get to Nazareth, excuse me, get to Bethlehem, and pay their taxes, and then head back home very quickly. And, and uh, maybe that's why she didn't bother to, to bring baby clothes. Maybe that's why she didn't bother to provide for the child that would be born. Surely she didn't think she wouldn't have the baby, you know. I mean, after a while, you, you begin to see that something's happening, you know. Uh, of course, she was young. But then, think about it. Not only is she pregnant, but there is no place in the room, in the inn, for her to sleep, to lay down. There's no room, there's no bed, there's no hot and cold running water, there's no heat, there's not much light, unless you can call a candle or two light. It was the wrong time there. It's the wrong time to be in the stable. Think about it for a minute. Uh, if it's in the winter time, uh, the innkeeper is not going to drive his animals out of the, the, the stable, out into the cold. He's going to keep them there. If, uh, he doesn't want them to, to be affected by the cold. And so he keeps them there in, in the stable. So first of all, you, you're, you're not the only occupant of the stable. And second of all, uh, you have a choice. You can keep the door closed and enjoy the smell or you can open the door for fresh air and enjoy the being freezing to death. Okay, so it, it, it's 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 not a it's not a good time to be in a stable. It's the wrong time. It's the wrong time for the innkeeper. Think about it. Uh, a lot of people make the innkeeper the bad guy because he he didn't have room for them. But uh, it's bad for it bad for him because the next time. Uh, these are paying customers. These are people that want to stay in his inn. And the next time they think, uh, I'm going to go to bed. No, I'm not going to go there because there's no room in the inn there. I'm going to find a place. And so he's going to miss out on customers that normally would come to his place. He would provide him money. So it's really the wrong time to be innkeeper too because he, he's, lo he's losing paying customers. John 1.10 says this, 
He was in the world. John, John 1, 10, chapter 1, verses 10 and 12. It was the wrong time for Jesus. There was no bed. There was no crib. In the sense we call crib, there was a, there was a manger, but uh, I've always thought about the word manger. Uh, I mean, when we when we sing the, those songs, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. We, uh, we forget where the word manger comes from. It comes from the a disease called mange you know, that the animals can have. You know, uh, we it, it's not a clean place. It's not a a uh, pretty place. And sure, there may there may have been fresh straw that they could put in the in the in the, the this cattle trough. But even if they even if they made that into a bed, Jesus didn't have any clothes. You know, the strips they they used strips of clothing to wrap in Jesus in. And someone has suggested that that is the same way that they buried their dead. They would wrap they're dead with strips of cloth. Maybe this would been set aside specifically for that purpose. Whatever the case was, there was no room for Jesus in the end. John 1, chapter 1, verse 10 and 12. He was in the world. The world was made through him. The world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him the wrong time for Jesus, but it says, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God to those who believe in his name. I talk about all the wrong things about the Christmas uh, adventure that Mary and Joseph had, but let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says it's the right time. It says, but when the fullness of time in fact, uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the more modern translations in Russian says it was a fixed time. God had fixed the time. God had said, "This is when I'm going to send my son. This is this is when everything is going to be complete. This is when everything is said and, and, and available. And I'm going to I'm going to set this time aside so that I can send my son at the perfect time." To redeem the world. That's what Galatians chapter 4 verse 5 says. To redeem them that were under the law. It was the right time. The fullness of time. It was God's plan. It was fixed permanently on the calendar. 402 years after the completion of Jerusalem. Uh, Haggai wrote uh, this uh, this verse, Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more it is a little while and I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations and then shall the desire of nations uh, come and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. It was the right time. God planned it all along. Not only was it the right time he sent the right person. God sent forth His Son, the Bible says. In Genesis 1-1 it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And in John 1-1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That simply tells me that, that the Word was, was the, uh, the incarnate of the pre-incarnate Jesus. That Jesus was there when the world was created. That God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were there creating the world that you and I know. And we, I just read recently that they have discovered another planet, bigger than the planet Jupiter, uh, circling another sun somewhere in our universe. And, and to think about all these things that, that, that God has done and that God continues to do and show Himself mightily in our behalf. I, I just recently came across some pictures of, uh, of snowflakes. And, and, you know, we, we see the snow and we, we think nothing of it. You know, that just, sometimes it's bothered, sometimes it's pretty. But 
they took they, they began to magnify these pictures of snowflakes. And, and maybe I'll have to put them on, on the internet if I can find them again. Uh, because each one, each one was perfect. Each one was different. Not one snowflake is the same. It, is, it just amazes me. They, they all have six sides, and yet they're, they're all different. It's just like you and I. We, we all have two, two eyes and a nose and a mouth, and yet we're all different. But God's created us all different because that's the kind of God we serve, the, the God that understands that, that you are the right person for this day and for this hour. You are the right person that God has chose to raise up. You are the right person. God is this. In the world, the preachers of Jesus, Jesus Christ, for those that have never heard, you are the right person. Amen. Amen. Each one of you are different. Each one of you have a different personality. Each one of you, uh, I, you know, I, I, I worry about people that try to categorize people because it's like trying to categorize the the, the, the snowflakes. Uh, we got we lump them all in one thing, and we but, but they're all different. Jesus was the right person. For God to send for. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. It says, Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not, not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus Christ came. He was equal with God. He was, he was of the same essence as God. He was, was part of the Trinity. He was, he, was, he was one with God. And yet He was willing to come. Take your sins and my sin on the cross of Calvary. Thought it not Robert and equal to God. Made himself no reputation that he might take your sins and my sins. Hebrews 1, verse 2 says this. Jesus has in these last days, God has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the world. Yes, God sent the right person. Send his only begotten son. Not only did he send the right person, he came in the right man. Isaiah 7 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a son. Behold, the virgin will seed and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, <coughs> Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and, and peace, there shall be no end. Amen. Yes, God sent uh, Jesus in the right manner because if, if he had sent an angel, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have received it because he would not have been affected with all the problems and all the difficulties that you and I uh, face. He, but he fixed, he, he, he was faced with the same financial needs. He was faced with the same, the same tiredness and the same, the same uh, rejection that you and I experienced. And yet, because of all this, he was able to, to take upon himself your sins and my sins because he faced all these as a perfect human being. He, he could have very easily I, I, when Jesus was tempted by, by, by the enemy, he, he could have very easily said, I'll, I'll take the easy way out. I'll, I, I, to get all these kingdoms, I'll just bow down and worship Satan and I can have all these kingdoms. But Jesus refused because he understood there was a greater goal. There was a greater plan, a greater purpose for his life. says, in Isaiah unto us, a child is born. It speaks of the humanity of Jesus, that he was, that he was born to, to this young girl. And then it says, unto us, a son is given. That speaks of, of his uh, deity because, uh, because of who his father is. Because of who his father is. Think about it. The, the Bible says the sins of the fathers are visited upon the children of the third and fourth generation. But Jesus, uh, so everyone who is born of a father uh, receives the same nature as his father. 
But if you were born of a human being, you received the same sin nature that your father had and your father received. And, and the Bible says we are all born under sin. We're all, we're all born as, if you please, slaves to sin. The, the Bible says there's none righteous. There's not one righteous. I, I, I can appreciate that. And many times I say to myself, he was a good man. Or she's, she's, a, she's a good person. But without God, there's none good. The Bible says there's none good. No, not one. But Jesus Christ, because he was not born of a human man, because his father was God Almighty, he received a the nature that was not subject to sin, that was not subject to Satan. Uh, every when Adam and Eve choose to obey uh, Satan and, and eat of the tree, they, they became because the Bible says, in whom you obey, his servant you become. Because they chose to obey Satan. They became Satan's servant, and everyone else that is born in the human race becomes a servant of the same person that their father, Adam, became a servant. But Jesus Christ came that you and I might be born again, not of earthly seed, but of heavenly seed, that we might receive Him as Lord and Master of our life. That, 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 that we might, that, that our nature can be changed, that we would no longer serve sin, but we would choose, we would die out to self and serve God and make Him Lord and Master of our life. He came, and Jesus came in the right manner. He came for the right reason. That was to redeem us. To buy us back from sin. That was, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 to 7 says that He we, we have, having been predestinated, that God predestined us to the adoption as sons of Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise and the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the blood. In Him we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. We read in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 5 that, that we... That because of what Jesus Christ did, because He was sent, because He came, we have, we have received the adoption of sons. The adoption of sons. Uh, the, the neat thing about being adopted, okay, in, in, in the U.S., if you are adopted in the U.S., you cannot be disowned. If you adopt a child, you cannot disown the child. If the child is, is your child from then on. Now, the other thing is, if you are born a son and, and your father chooses, he can disown you, okay? But, but not if you're adopted. And, and this is a picture of God that he has adopted us. And he, because he has adopted us, he has received us. He will not disown us. He will accept us. And, and we are his children. We are, we, we are, and it goes on to say that not only were we adopted, but we were made heirs. Relationship 4 5 that we were made heirs of God. Think about that for a minute. That you, you have an inheritance. I, most of us, I, I, at one time or another, most of us have thought about the the idea, you know, it would have been nice to have been born to a rich man. It would be nice if my parents were rich. You know, it would be nice if we had uh, thousands, maybe millions of dollars, you know. Then, then we wouldn't have such a difficult time. We, we wouldn't have to work so hard. But, but I, I'm here to tell you that we're, we're just here for a short time. We're just here for a short time. Now, trust me, when you get my age, you realize uh, the time goes really fast here on earth. But I, I'm here to tell you that I have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. If you have made Jesus Christ Lord in your life, you have inheritance that, that, that this world would envy you for. In fact, uh, but the good news is that you don't have to envy anybody. You can receive the inheritance also. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, 16 says, We are children of God and children and heirs. Heirs of God and 
join heirs with Jesus Christ. I've been in most of the quote unquote beautiful places on this earth. Uh, places that people want to go and want to visit, you know. Beautiful places. And then they were, they were, I am amazed at some of the architecture in St. Petersburg and here in Moscow. And, and beautiful places, but I'm here to tell you they don't compare with the place that I'm going to visit and spend the rest of my life. Uh, I have a mansion just over the hilltop. Amen? Amen. I have a mansion just over the hilltop. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to the abundance of mercy has begotten us again, begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away and reserved in heaven for you. I love it. One of our themes for, for the prayer meeting this afternoon is hope. We have, a, we have a hope. We have a hope. And I, I want to share with you a scripture that, that just blew me away. I, on, on Tuesday I was reading the scripture verse and it just blew me away uh, uh, talking about hope. And I'll share that with you at our prayer meeting. So you, you don't want to miss coming to the prayer meeting, okay? Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 23. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Galatians 3.29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Amen. We used to sing a song, Abraham's blessings are mine. You know, and... and and it's true. We have received the promise that God gave to Abraham. Praise the Lord. Not only, not only did he come for the right reason, he came to the right person. He came to the right person. You know who the right person is that he came to? Me. He came to sinners. He did not call, come to call the righteous to repentance, but He came to set you and I free of our sins. He came that you and He came to the right person. I needed Him. I needed Him bad, and He came and, and met me at my point of need. He came and ministered to me at the very point of my life when, when I was so discouraged and he came to the right person. First Timothy 1.15 says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Don't you can't you kind of agree with Paul there that if 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 there's anybody that needed saving it was me. If there's anybody that you felt needed Jesus, it was me. Romans 5 8, but God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God demonstrated His love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's the right time. It's the right person. It's the right time. Did you hear what I'm saying? In the fullness of time, Jesus Christ came that in this service, in this service, minute in this hour that God has brought you into this place it's the right time if you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life it's time for you to turn your life over to Jesus you are here because God is speaking to you today and saying come to me all you that are weak and heavy laden come to me that those of you that carry burdens you can't carry any longer come to me and I I, I will give you rest he's saying it to you right now. This is the right time.
for you to come to Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7 and 8 says this, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, today if you will hear His voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion uh, in the day of uh, that, that in the wilderness. The children of Israel, God, God said, Today you need to humble yourself. And instead they rebelled against God and they, they all died in the wilderness. But God says, today, don't do like He did in the wilderness. Don't harden your heart. Today, make, choose to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Today, make Jesus, give Jesus an opportunity to come into your life and create a new spirit within you. Today is the day if you will not harden your heart. There's one scripture, I, I, as I was praying about this message, that... that spoke to me and says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You see, in, uh, until you acknowledge God as God, there's, 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 there's anger. Without, without the joy of God, you can't experience the joy of Christmas. Without, hey, you're walking around with a chip on your shoulder, you're walking around ready to uh, bite somebody's head off if they say the wrong thing. <laughs> don't let that day, don't, don't, don't let it, that wrath continue in, 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 your, in your heart, but you rather turn to God. Don't, let, don't, don't, don't wait until, until you die for, for you to realize how, how lost you were. But today, if you, will not hurt, if, you, if, if you won't harden your heart, God will meet you. And God will answer your prayers. And the last scripture verse that God spoke to me about as I was praying about this message is that the one that says, Thou fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. No, I'm not saying that you're going to die tonight. I, 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 would, not, I, I would not prophesy that to you. But I would say, why would you be like the, the man that that chose to, to live his own life instead of turn to God. And, and, and God says to him, tonight you're going to die and, and whose things are these going to be? I, I don't care how much stuff you got. I don't, how much, I don't care how many things you've got at some point in your life. You're going to leave them behind. But today, today you can make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Today, you can accept Jesus. Today, you can receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Would you do that for me? If you were here and you heard the message that I just spoke, I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Today is the day of salvation. So pray with me. Say, Father God, right now I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my life and create a new spirit within me. Make me a new creation. Let all the old things pass away. I believe that right now Jesus has come into my heart. I believe that right now Jesus is Lord of my life. I believe that right now I am a new creation. And from this day forward, I will live for Jesus because he died for me. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If you, say, if you prayed that prayer with me, write me. Let me know what God's doing in your life. God bless you. Amen.